Right, so today we're looking at part 16 of Big Ed and Liz on 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After Season 7, which is the first of the two days of the season finale tell-all. The season so far has been an absolutely wild ride. Over the past few months, Ed and Liz have had two engagement parties, one in San Diego that ended with Liz in tears and Ed calling off the engagement, and a subsequent one in Arkansas with Big Ed's family that actually went okay. Alongside the drama surrounding the engagement parties, the pair have also spent much of the season arguing over Liz's desire to return to full-time work. In the final episode of the season, despite Ed's objections, Liz accepted a partnership offer at the restaurant she's been working at for the past three years. Another big issue between the pair of them has been the wedding itself, with Liz wanting Ed to commit to marrying her and Ed repeatedly reiterating that he isn't ready yet. As Ed and Liz's relationship gradually worsened, Ed turned to his mother, who he hadn't been in contact with for over a year due to the fact that they fell out over his relationship with Liz. She advised Ed not to commit to Liz anytime soon, and so the final episode ended with Ed telling Liz that he refuses to be pressured into even discussing the idea of marriage, despite the two of them being engaged. Now it's time for the season finale tell-all, and it is just as explosive and dramatic as promised. It's been three months since we last saw the pair, so we're heading off to Big Ed's house as he gets ready for the tell-all to find out where the relationship stands. I go, broke up with Liz again. Um, just things weren't going well, so um, I asked her to move out, so she moved out. So surprise, surprise, they broke up. The exact same storyline on repeat for yet another season. Initially, I was a bit like, damn, they broke up whilst the cameras weren't rolling. We missed a bunch of drama. But then I realised we could watch any older video of them breaking up and it would literally be the exact same thing. And just to clarify, him saying that they broke up means that he did indeed dump her again for the 10th time. Congrats on the milestone, I guess. On a side note, who is this man's stylist for this episode? He looks like the type of guy that Batman beats up in alleyways. <laughs> I got dumped by Ed again. Ed pretty much told me I had less than a week to find a place to live. You know what? I am actually so glad that they never got around to buying a house together. He's always dangled things like visas and money over his girlfriend's heads, but fundamental necessities like shelter is a whole new low for him. Thankfully, Liz did end up finding an apartment, albeit after a month and a half of soul-destroying sofa surfing. Although, on the plus side, much to Ed's annoyance, she now has a housemate. How do you think Ed feels about you living with a dude? I really don't care what Ed thinks because I'm here because he dumped me. Ed is such a jealous little deviant. I bet no small part of her is absolutely loving how he's going to be feeling at the idea of her living with another guy. And she's right, he kicked her out and dumped her. She can live wherever she likes. Unfortunately though, if you thought for a second that this meant that they're horrendous, toxic, illogical ordeal was finally over. I'm sorry to inform you that Liz took him back again. So far it's been working out really good. I don't know what we are. Ed wants me to wear my ring. I do wear it, but I don't know if we're engaged. Liz, what are you doing? Why are you wearing that ring if he's not even honouring what it means? You might as well wear a big sticker on your forehead saying property of Big Ed. Honestly, I know I'm the one that's supposed to be explaining this relationship, but I'm just as lost as you guys are. So I guess it's time to just get on with the tell-all and finally figure out what the hell is going on. Oh my god, baby, you look great. Oh, you look great. Thank you. You, look, you beautiful. look beautiful. Me personally, I feel like this has probably been the healthiest and strongest with Ed. Oh, for goodness sakes, not this nonsense again. What does that even mean? Genuinely, if their relationship was a human, it would be on its deathbed in a coma. It being the strongest and healthiest it's ever been means absolutely nothing when it's relative to that. Like, congratulations, it lifted a finger, but that final spark is nothing more than a muscle spasm. Remnants of what was once life that no longer exists in any real meaning of the word. It's time to pull a plug. You. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice How are you? Sh Shalom. How do I greet you? <laughs> As Asla Wego. Uh, wait, Asla I'll see you later. No, uh, no, sorry. We, we, we're practice. There is something seriously wrong with this guy. Can he just stop disrespecting people for five seconds? Giving a Muslim man a Jewish greeting and then making a mockery of the correct Arabic peace greeting 
by purposefully mixing up with a Spanish one. It's so embarrassingly ignorant. And it wasn't even an accidental natural mix up. It sounded rehearsed. It was like he had planned that joke in hindsight and thought it was going to be absolutely hilarious. Good on Bilal for keeping his composure there because he could have flipped him like a pancake and I genuinely don't think anyone would have complained. Anyway, the couples make their way into the auditorium, sit down and eventually get around to asking Ed to explain his situation with Liz. We're engaged, but um. we're not living together. So now it's it's great. She has her place. I have my place. But you're engaged. Yeah. And you slept in different hotel rooms last night. I love the disdain that all the other cast members have for Ed in these tellals. It's the only thing that makes them even partially bearable without any commentary. To be fair though, I don't think them staying in separate rooms was necessarily their decision. I wouldn't be surprised if the producers set it up like that so that they could save all the fighting for the cameras, rather than allowing them to be able to argue with each other in the privacy of their own rooms. I will see you every other night. And so I can't see each other two days in a row? Like, it's kind of weird. so complicated, yeah. I swear to God. Is, if we didn't do this, we wouldn't have a chance. Nice optimistic outlook on the relationship. Definitely one worth fighting for. Literally saying that if they weren't physically separated into entirely different houses, even with Liz now working full time, often late into the evenings and even on weekends, they wouldn't have a chance of making the relationship work. If you can't see someone more than once every two days without it descending into vitriol, Maybe the relationship isn't worth pursuing. Anyway, Sean Robinson, the host, then asks Ed if he did indeed kick Liz out. He says he didn't, but then Liz butts in to say that he did, not once, but twice. Apparently he gave her five days to move out, invited his friend round to help her pack, and didn't care that she had nowhere to go. I slept on couches. Oh, wow. You're a piece of shit for doing that. Okay, well, first of all, you don't know the situation. I begged her, Liz, it's not working. Please move out. How does this situation have anything to do with it? It doesn't matter how bad the relationship is, unless your life or physical well-being is in danger, you don't make someone homeless just because things aren't working out. If they were fighting a lot and couldn't live together but Liz had nowhere else to go, why couldn't Ed go stay with his family in Arkansas? He bragged about how rich they are and about how much property they own. Surely they could find a spare room for him for a little bit. Or what about his mum? He rekindled his relationship with her in the last episode. Why couldn't he go stay with her? Or even his best friend Rich? He's been happy to dump Liz on Ed's behalf several times and was probably the friend that got invited around to help her pack. Couldn't he have stepped up? You want to marry her and you're engaged to her? You don't do that to Dude, you, it will happen to all of you. I'm telling you right now. No. It won't happen it to me. It will eventually <laughs> happen to you. Ed, we don't I run from her, it, we I deal with you. it. This is exactly what we were saying in the last episode. He genuinely thinks that this is a normal part of being in a relationship. It's insane. I honestly think he thinks that all couples go through stuff like this all the time. Shaida saying we don't run from it, we deal with it silenced him because it genuinely might have been the first time that he's realized that there are other ways of dealing with problems. She gave me a two week ultimatum. Either you marry me in two weeks or a commitment no. or I'm out. That's I said exactly either what you said. You, commit you marry me within two it. weeks or no. I'm out of here. No. That's exactly what you no. said. Liz is no doubt very toxic herself and their arguments escalate because they bounce off each other. But I don't know how much I blame her on this one. Like he proposed to her through her two engagement parties, looked at buying a house with her, and then all of a sudden just completely stopped entertaining the idea of marrying her. Wanting some sort of commitment so that she can stop wasting her time if they're at a dead end is more than fair. Although that is assuming that she's being honest when she says that she was just wanting a commitment, rather than actually wanting him to marry her within two weeks. Go be you single? threaten me, you're like, I'm gonna go and sleep date. around, that's you. Because gonna... you dumped me, I'm single, so either well, Liz, if you, that's want what you want me, don't you want threaten me, me, commit yourself. Don't threaten no me. She really does know how to get to Ed, doesn't she? She knows how jealous and controlling he is, so floating the idea that if he dumps her, she's gonna go and enjoy single life must just get his blood absolutely boiling. It's kind of bad, but she is basically giving him a taste of his own manipulation medicine there. Well, on the topic of seeing other people, Liz is then asked if she's aware if Big Ed was seeing anyone else during their break. I don't know if he's been seeing anybody else, but I know he was on a dating app. I got a screenshot through Instagram. She spies on me. How am I wow. gonna, how am I spying on you when it's an Asian dating website? Okay. Not sure it being an Asian dating website means that she wasn't spying on him, but I feel like Ed should be focusing more on the fact that he was signed up to and active on this website rather than how Liz came about the information. It wasn't actually her spying on him anyway. Some woman saw Ed on the app, screenshotted it and shared it to Instagram and Liz's mum came across it and forwarded it to her. It was only then that the spying began and by then it was justified. 
my mom and I created an account. Which is kind of weird. Yeah. He was on, on it an hour after I left his house. We checked again the next day and he was active three hours prior to that. So it wasn't even just whilst they were broken up. It was whilst they were seeing each other too. This man's commitment to his fetish is relentless. I swear, if these two finally break up for good and Big Ed reappears on another season of 90 Day Fiancé with another Filipino girlfriend, I'm going to lose my mind. Honestly, every Asian government should strongly be considering getting a tsunami and earthquake type alert for when Big Ed is single and scouring the Asian market. And on the topic, Sean then asks Ed about Rose. Have you spoken to your ex-fiance Rose? No. You haven't corresponded with her through text? When questions like this come, you just know it's going to get juicy. You can deny the first question, but when details get added and the question put to you again, alarm bells should be ringing. This isn't a casual conversation, it is a well-investigated episode purely made for drama. The producers will have done their digging, and denying it is only going to make you look even worse when the truth comes to light. I may have, I don't, I don't remember. You may. How are you not... It's a yes or no. I don't know. I don't know if I was or not. Well, as you probably expect, we're about to find out. Next, Sean introduces Rose, who's tuning in from the Philippines. This is the first time that Liz has met Rose, and it actually gets off to a really friendly start, with Liz telling Rose that she looks beautiful, and Rose returning the compliment. However, the niceties don't last long, and shortly after, Liz asks Rose if Ed has messaged her, and Rose says yes. Ed always asking me for uh, FaceTime. So Ed said that he didn't, hasn't spoken to you at all. That's not true. Unreal. So not only has he been looking for a new partner on Asian dating websites, he's also run back to his Asian ex. If this is still not enough for Liz to leave him, I genuinely don't know what would be. Although, how many times have we said that before and nothing has changed? At least this time Big Ed can't deny the accusations because Rose came with receipts. I hope all is well. You look amazing. She says thanks. He says, I want to come to the Philippines again to see you if you're open. Wow. Caught red-handed. I also love that she didn't return the compliment to Big Ed about how she looks. Like, she might be polite, but she's no liar. Still, I'm surprised that she would even reply to Ed, let alone say that he's welcome there. I mean, obviously he can go to the Philippines if he wants to, like, she can't stop him. But even if she didn't mean that he's welcome in her home, after everything that happened between them, I'm surprised that she didn't air or block him as soon as she heard that he wants to come back. You just said that you were in communication with her. Let's sit down. Say yes or no. Did you or did you not just say I have not spoken to her? Me no speak English. He is infuriating. This response is actually sick. Just when you think after making Liz homeless and disrespecting her with Rose and on dating apps that he couldn't possibly get any more vile and disrespectful. He says me no speak English when confronted with evidence that he's been disloyal. He is literally toying with her. He's not taking any of it seriously and he's cowering away from any responsibility with offensive humor. If I was Liz, I genuinely wouldn't know whether to laugh or cry. You know what? It's not something to joke about, Ed. It is, because she's, this is her. This is who Liz is. She's yeah. reading, the proof is in the pudding. She's reading a stupid text. Tell me about that text. How is he spinning this back on Liz? What is he even trying to say? She read a text that he sent to another girl out loud because she was asked to, and he says this is who she is. What does that even mean? Maybe I'm missing whatever ridiculous point he's trying to make here, but it sounds like he's just scraping the mold from the bottom of the barrel, and nobody's having any of it. I asked you a simple question like, did you reach out to Rose? You told I, me no three times that you didn't remember. I might have been mistaken. Why is he smiling while saying this? Why doesn't he just admit that he was lying? What has he even got to lose at this point? A shred of honesty and maturity are just about the only things that he can redeem for himself here. Well, he might be finding his spineless web of lies entertaining, but Liz isn't seeing the funny side of it. Next, Sean asks Rose if she thinks that Ed wants a relationship with her, and she says yes, but he's currently in a relationship, and Liz responds at breaking point. I don't think I have any more respect. Let me have my ring back. Oh. Let oh, him. wow. You're a dick. 
took the words right out of my mouth. Honestly, I would not be surprised if a big part of the reason that Ed never wanted to actually get around to marrying Liz was because it would mean that he could no longer take the engagement away from her as an act of manipulation or as an act of punishment. Either way though, it is laughable at this point. This ring gets more exercise than Ed does. She's genuinely taken off her finger more times than they've been to therapy. And I don't think those two statistics are entirely unrelated. He got caught. I just want to move on. You know, somebody who hasn't been watching these two for long would be applauding Liz here. They'd be like, good for you, know your worth and leave him. But how often does it feel like the final straw, like things couldn't get any worse for Liz? And then the very next episode, they're back together, saying that they're happier and healthier than ever. Like, I'm glad she stormed off, but it's going to take a lot to convince me that they're finally over. I know our situation's crazy, like, living separately now, but it's been the best our relationship's ever been. This is not how I expected um, today to go. Well, that makes one of us. To be fair, maybe she had in the back of her mind the idea that something could have gone wrong and that they could have ended up arguing. Because let's be honest, it doesn't take much. But to find out that he's actually been messaging Rose this entire time and lying about it, understandably was quite a shock to her. But weirdly, given it didn't have much to say for himself during the tell-all, he seems to have a completely different idea of how it went down to pretty much everyone else. You know, I'm just cooling down. It was just frustrating for Liz to sit there and play the victim, which she's not. I just felt like she turned everything around. He is so close, so close to figuring it all out. She is recounting events from their relationship and reacting to new information about things he did wrong behind her back and coming across as a victim. He is so close to realising that she simply is one. It's not like everything was piling on top of her and she counterattacked with some whataboutism. She was just revealing her actual part in this story. I had six other couples just attacking me nonstop, completely taking Liz aside. And Liz just stood there and let me take it and then and then jumped on the bandwagon. Maybe because you deserved it, Ed. You didn't get jumped down an alleyway by a bunch of kids trying to rob you. You were the focus of some very fair and valid criticism and expected to provide some sort of explanation for your insulting and disrespectful behaviour. Well, unfortunately for Ed, although this was the end of the first day of the tell-all, the drama was far from finished for the night. This time, when the castmates got back to the hotel, they were met with a drinks reception on the terrace. And with the alcohol flowing, tensions continue to rise. Soon, after awkwardly avoiding each other to begin with, Big Ed pulls Liz for a chat. I want to apologise to you for what I said. You can't just break up with me and go make these stupid choices a day or two later and then try to come back like... Yeah, exactly. How many times has he messed up and apologised, hoping everything would be okay again, just to go and mess up all over again shortly after? And anyway, he's apologising to her for what he said during the tell-all, but that's only part of it. What about apologising for going behind her back and talking to Rose, and for being on an Asian dating website? When you broke my heart after the first tell-all before we got engaged, I told you what I did on my, in my single time, and you kept that for me. He gives this little nod of encouragement here, but unsurprisingly, shortly after, he seems to withdraw his acceptance that he's the one in the wrong. He starts going off on one about how he wasn't keeping anything from Liz or lying, he just forgot that he was messaging Rose. And then, evidently sick of being the one in the wrong, tries to spin it around and attacks Liz all over again. And here I'm trying to defend myself, and I have six other couples pouncing down my throat and you're standing there and you're letting me drown. Again, she wasn't letting him drown. He made the conscious choice to roll about in his own feces and she just sat back and ashamedly watched as he got hosed down as a result. And anyway, what does he mean drown? There is no way someone built like a lobster pot boy doesn't float. And you started to perform. I'm performing? You were performing. You're acting like a little attorney. Thanks you for your apologies. I'm just a fucking performance. Honestly, these two are never going to heal over anything. One second he's apologising, and the next he's at her throat, accusing her of being the one in the wrong. Their relationship is one giant scab that keeps getting picked. It just constantly exists in this cycle between scab and open wound. So anyway, Liz storms off and goes outside to chat to the girls, and gives a brief but honest summary of the situation. I am living on my own. I am financially stable for everything. I don't need his help. I want him. I love him. I do not want to be used. I'm not 
dealing with this anymore. What do you mean you want him? Why? What is wrong with this woman? Has Big Ed torn her down so much that she genuinely believes that this is the best that she can get? She's either very deeply troubled or not being honest about the fact that she's addicted to the drama and all the fame and attention it brings. And of course, the drama for the night is just getting started. Ed heads over to talk to Andre and Jovi, but unlike the girls with Liz, they do not have his back. You do not talk to women like that. What happened today, I had six of you jumping on me, and the one person that I would expect that would support me starts acting like an attorney, goes over and reads a text like I'm a third grader. Seriously, I wish someone would get him to explain what the hell he's talking about here, because I just don't see the issue. Liz was asked by the host of the tell-all to walk over and read the conversation between Ed and Rose, and she did it. Ed was being accused of talking to another woman and denying it, and then Liz got presented with evidence. Like, of course she was gonna read it. You Liz, want me to be on Liz, your side when no, you're I want you to try. I want you to stop acting like a prima donna. You out stop acting like a prima donna. You still and wanted to be with her. Oh my goodness. Not only is he not addressing what she's saying, he's not even listening to her. It's like an argument between kids where one of them sticks their fingers in their ears and just shouts mean comments at the other one. If he doesn't think he's in the wrong, he should be able to explain his point of view, but he can't, so he's reduced to this. Today was about you performing to make me look bad. You Vince, gotta you make me fucking carry your luggage to the airport. Performer, you're so Vince, you're a performer. Yeah. Bye. Their troubles on their own are enough as it is, but why they decide to actually drink alcohol knowing they're going to be on camera is beyond me. Ed's more sinister side definitely comes out when he's drunk, and he gets a lot worse at masking his manipulative behaviour. For someone who's so concerned about their image, I'm surprised he puts himself in that position. And when Jovi tries to tell him that he shouldn't talk to Liz like that, he continues his vile tirade. Well, first of all, you don't know my situation. I don't, and, let me, and let me, you're shooting your mouth off. No, 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 so no, no, shut no. the f up, pussy. You're gonna go to a strip club with him, and you're married. Talk about that for a minute. Once again, deflection tactics. Ed is basically referring to what happened the night before this. Andre and Jovi had a drink together and Andre kept bringing up Jovi's love of strip clubs. Andre says he's never been to one before, so Jovi asks him if he wants to go to one, but Andre says no. There was a bit of drama around it because Jovi felt like Andre kept bringing it up to cause drama, but that's neither here nor there. The point is that Ed is deflecting from the fact that he's in the wrong here. It's only when Angela approaches him in a slightly more empathetic manner that he actually responds. I'm very disappointed in you, Ed. What are you doing? What are you doing? Ah, the classic Big Ed nose scrunch again. That is a classic. Anyway, it's weird. Out of everyone for him to respond to, I'm surprised it's Angela. I think this is fundamentally why his relationship with Liz doesn't work. They're both very aggressive and stubborn and counter-attacking, so whenever Liz confronts him about something, he bites back and they spiral. Maybe he needs someone far more agreeable in a relationship, although he certainly doesn't deserve it. How do I fix it? You know what's wrong, I don't know right? How to be well, in a just... I don't know how to be in a relationship. Then you need to leave her alone. First of all, she's right, he does need to leave her alone. But more importantly, him saying how do I fix it is proof that he knows he's in the wrong. I mean, not that any of it wasn't already clear to us, but sometimes it's hard to tell if anything is actually sinking in with him. Sadly, whatever advice he's given is never going to be taken on board. All the other castmates then gather around and basically tell Ed to stop throwing things back in Liz's face, to start accepting responsibility when he's in the wrong, and to stop saying such rude and offensive things to her. But he just nods his head and lets it slide in one ear and out the other. And that was that. They will head off to their separate rooms ahead of the second and final day of the tell-all, where there is plenty more drama to come. So if you enjoyed watching today, please feel free to subscribe down below so you can catch the final video of the season, as well as get more videos just like this one as soon as they're out. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.